Welcome to another episode of The Adult Potato. I'm Fiona Tater. And I'm Spencer Lotka. This week, our own Trish Stovies took one for the team by expressing the frustration of a lot of parents of students at Wellington schools. In this episode, we're going to talk about some of the good that's happening at the middle high school, despite the toxic culture that regularly pops up like zits on a teen's face. First off, let's recognize that the middle high school caps out at sophomores this year as it's the inaugural year for the school. Despite that, our sports teams are competing at a varsity level against full teams, including juniors and seniors, and still kicking their asses in a lot of cases. These kids are killing it out there, and we just want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. Between the dedication of the kids and the leadership of the coaches, our Eagles are flying high and deserve all the kudos for their hard work and success. Secondly, according to the website www.psdfutureready.org, if you click on the Find Your Path button, you'll see Wellington High School in the Choose a High School section. Since Future Ready is a program for junior and seniors, it looks like it may be something that will be available in our school next year. With choices ranging from HVAC and construction and natural resource management plus a ton more, our kids are going to have access to some amazing opportunities. Now for our younger students, Rice Elementary is part of the Leader in Me program, which is walking our young ones through the creation of wonderful habits that help them own their choices around happiness, goals, finding their voice, working together, and so much more. Things that are crucial to becoming the amazing adults that we all want our children to be. Maybe some of the admins can take a walk through the halls of Rice and be reminded of the habits that create leaders. Hell. Maybe we can all take some tips from these kids. All in all, fix the culture and our schools will be a reason that people will not only be proud to live in Wellington, but will likely bring more amazing teachers that will want to be a part of it. It can put us on the map for all the right reasons. No pressure, but clean this shit up. We know you can do it. Leave the ego at the door, roll up your sleeves and make it happen. In other news, we have a huge opportunity for a grant supporting a master plan for trails and parks through the Colorado State Outdoor Recreation Grant. And you can be a part of the town getting this grant by taking a few minutes to email Bill Cooksey at cooksey at wellingtoncolorado.gov or drop off your letter at Town Hall so it can be included in the town's application. We'll put that email address in the show description along with some information and a template on our Facebook page and website that you can use if you'd rather do that. The website is www.theadultpotato.com. While the town has designated the master planning process as a top priority, getting this grant can actually fund that process, leaving more money in the coffers for other projects. This is a win-win for the town, and your support could help tip the scales in our favor to create a phenomenal regional park for northern Colorado, bringing in residents from other areas to enjoy our shops and restaurants, interconnected bike and walking trails, and ADA compliance for all our parks. The improvements that can result from this grant will improve the quality of the town and benefit all of us. There will be links in the website to information on the grant, a template to use for your letter or email, and additional ideas to use in your communication. Our application is being turned into the state on Wednesday, March 15th. Let's get those letters and emails in so the application can show the town's excitement for this great opportunity. This week, we're continuing our Wellington Gold series, where we focus on organizations in town that help support and build our community, with our interview featuring Lisa Christopherson from Beauty Renewed. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Wellington Gold. And today, we have Lisa Christofferson with us. And so let's just start right out, Lisa, with um, how about you tell us about your organization and what it does. Great. Thank you. My organization is named Beauty Renewed. We are a foundation, and we're also a salon, spa, and boutique here in Wellington. I started the foundation about five years ago after about 18 years ago, starting to fight human trafficking. I've been working in the area of fighting human trafficking for about 18 years with a nonprofit out of Fort Collins, where I started a organization called You Count Marketplace, where I buy products from victims of trafficking and also marginalized communities to offer opportunity. And then about five years ago, I realized the problem was so bad here in the United States because I had been currently working 
in India and um, in Asia and also in Europe and thought, well, what's going on here in the United States? Realized that we're just as bad and started working, doing workshops here in the United States about five years ago, building product and offering opportunity. We're all about women helping women, but we also work with men. I have about five survivors of trafficking that are men that are also um, working with us and building product. That's amazing. Um, now, I understand that I-25 is a pretty important corridor when it comes to human trafficking. Um, what do people in Wellington and Northern Colorado in general need to know about what's happening in our area? So our area is definitely on the map. Uh, because of I-25 and I-70 and I-80, we are in the top 10 in the nation for trafficking incidents. Uh, the actual stats aren't exact because it's really hard to uh, work in the marginalized communities and getting an understanding what is an actual trafficking case. So the numbers are probably lower than what they really are in reality. Um, we have in our area, in our backyards, we have examples of this modern day slavery of force. We have fraud and we have coercion and it's going on in our in our backyards. Um, I actually work a lot with Larimer County Sheriff's Office and between uh, them on their sting operations, but then also working with um, FBI and a bunch of different agencies in the area, we're realizing more and more every day the numbers are getting higher. However, we are getting better. Uh, we are getting better educated on what is actually going on, and we're be we're we're being able to do something about it. So even though the numbers are going up, we're also having some um, anti. Uh, fighting this problem going up as well. So in our area, I um, highly recommend educating what traffickers look like because it is going on here. Okay, well then, you know, my next question was, what can people do to stay safe? And you just mentioned it's a good thing to know what traffickers look like. So educate us. Sure. Traffickers are, are very good businessmen. And they're very patient and they're very, uh, they just have good business plans, unfortunately. And so they're out there creating uh, opportunity because 100% of the reason why we have trafficking is money. And it is a capitalistic market. And they're finding out by preying on marginalized communities, homeless teens, which by the way, in the state of Colorado, at any given moment, we have over 1,500 homeless teens. Uh, in our area. So homeless teens, they're preying on, but even our granddaughters and daughters and, and sons and grandsons that are in our home are being sextorted as well. And that sextortion is another type of trafficking that's going on. So these are all areas of education. There's lots of websites you can get on. Polaris uh, website gives you a lot of the stats of the United States and what's going on here. I work with the Avery Center out of Greeley. I've been working with them for years. They are top in the field for knowing what's going on and also getting involved to, they work with law enforcement, they work um, with individuals. That's where right now I have about 15 to 20 women that are involved in workshops that I do twice a month here in Northern Colorado. And most of those girls have come through the Avery Center. So there's ways to find out. I do have stats here at our salon. If anybody's ever wanting to come by and get a sheet of paper about what's going on. And I'm happy to sit down and have a cup of coffee or a drink at our happy hour and talk to you about human traffic, uh, human trafficking, because I have a lot of information to share. So um, educate yourself, number one, and find out how you can educate your children. Um, the sooner we educate a child, the sooner we rescue them from slavery. That's a really good point. That's a, I just, it's not, it's never too early to have those discussions with kids. Um, so give me an example of something that you would say to your child to start educating them. Sure. First thing I would talk about is um, specifically, you know, we have these wonderful online chatting things that go on. Uh, I know uh, the story of a young girl who thought she was texting a boy at her age from California. His picture of him was this 
cute blonde Californian kid. And so she started talking with them. And about a year into this online relationship, of course, they got pretty close. And she started um, show, sending pictures of her compromised situations, he was asking. But again, it was over a relationship of a very long period of time online. Well, next thing you know, she started feeling uncomfortable and didn't want to send pictures anymore. And he then turned and said, if you don't send me pictures, I'll release everything that you've sent to me to your friends and family. And if uh, furthermore, if you don't meet me at this place, then I will expose you as well. And so then she ends up being a runaway teen, but actually was trafficked. And the reason for that is it's called sextortion. It's happening all over. So just really being involved with your child, being involved and knowing, hey, talk to me about this kid, you know, and any type of sign or flag, there are ways that you can um, help the child with education. Honestly, you look up sextortion online, there are great videos to teach our teens, great videos to teach our teens on that. So I'd be happy to share any specific information. There's just so much, but with anyone that would like to get um, to email me, I'd be happy to share information for um, parents. I'm and highly you, called to do that. Yes, yes. And so you sell products at your location at Beauty Renewed um, that help these um, victims of all these various crimes. That help. Yes. All the different, I mean, there's so many different names for them that right now. And um, so tell us your location so that people can come in and see what you have and shop with their dollars, you know, help people with their dollars. Yes, thank you. Every every um, purchase at Beauty Renewed in the retail area actually goes towards our foundation to continue to pay for salaries of survivors of trafficking and also marginalized communities. We are working with the Afghan refugees and individuals on certain reservations in South Dakota and Wyoming as well to do prevention to keep them out of trafficking. Mm -hmm. So marginalized communities and survivors of trafficking benefit from every purchase at our place at Beauty Renewed Salon Spa and Boutique. And that's at 3922 Cleveland Avenue in the old Roman um, salon. It's the big yellow house right there on Main Street. Our um, hours are Monday through Saturday. We are open and you can come in and shop anytime, nine to five. And uh, again, every purchase, these are products either made by or benefiting these individuals. I bring in products through my freedom supply chain from India, Nepal, and Spain. I've gone over and developed these products with these individuals. And then we also have products here from Houston, which is really close to number one in the nation for trafficking. And then also um, here in Northern Colorado and soon to be uh, Wyoming and South Dakota. So we're we're excited to share a product. I have a story behind everything in our in our boutique. So um, every purchase is very, very purposeful. That's wonderful. Okay, final question. You probably know what it is. What is your favorite potato dish? Well, I thought about it because <laughs> I do like potatoes, but I do have a by far favorite. And it would be in the form of either sweet potato fries or mm. my favorite sauteed in onion, potatoes and sweet potatoes with a Parmesan crust at the end. So Ooh. That's Hey, that's just a little highbrow for a Wellington dish. <laughs> now, come on. Well, <laughs> I am a cocktail girl, so. <laughs> there you go. Girl after my own heart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for sharing this education with us. And everybody, you know, you can... You can support people and shop at the same time. And that's always a good thing. So uh, this month is women this month is women's month. So women helping women, let's do it. Let's let's shop. Definitely. And so your your location is the one that has the sign that says like the manor or something in front of it. Wellington right? Manor, yes. Sorry. It's the Wellington Manor Beauty Renewed Salon Spa and Boutique. Awesome. Well, we will see you there. Okay, everyone, we'll see you next week. And uh yeah, like Fiona says, man, lock it up. <laughs> Bye, all. Definitely reach out to Lisa over at Wellington Manor with any questions that you may have. And while you're there, 
check out the products that they have for purchase that directly support those in need. It's something you can definitely feel good about. And that's the end of this episode. As always, thanks for watching and lock your doors.